what this um, is all about is really giving you a good understanding rather than a hard sell on bozos as to what makes a good lure, why a good lure works, how you select colour, just to give you a bit of an understanding um, that it is no accident that a good lure will catch good fish. During this um, presentation we're going to cover um, the five main areas shown below. Good design in a lure is everything. It, it's very important firstly that you match the hatch and also match the water. The eyes in a lure are very important. This is something that is left out of most soft plastic lures. We'll give you a bit of an understanding as to why a lure should have eyes. The swim action is extremely important. The colour and contrast, we just want to tell you why lures are weird colours. You'll understand um, after this presentation you know, why they are colours that just aren't natural fish colours and also the importance of scent. Good design catches fish. There's no doubt we put a lot of research into various species. This snapper was actually caught on the very, very first drop of one of the new Bozo's Cruncher lures. Um, two were caught on that morning within half an hour. Um, it wasn't just luck. It, it's planned. We do a lot of work into research, researching why um, the lure should be a certain shape and also the action. So the first area we'll really cover is, is the eyes and, and why are eyes important. Um, they're also, Bozo's eyes are unique, but the thing is with fish, you've got to understand that the eyes are the most important thing. You'll never see a fly fisherman, for example, make a fly without an eye on it. Nearly every hard body lure has eyes on it. Nearly all marlin lures have eyes on it. But why don't soft plastics? Scientific research in the USA shows the first part of a fish um, that triggers a predator to attack is actually the eyes. Now there's a, re a reason for this is that most fish have to take their prey head first because of the dorsal spines. Um, and you've got to understand that the eyes also in most fish, um, they're aware of that fact and that's why fish such as a kingfish is a prime example, has a black band around its body um, that goes straight across the eyes. Now when a, a kingfish is attacking, if you see one underwater, this band actually goes very black and hides the eye. Sharks are another good example where they have uh, an eyelid that actually rolls over the eye. Um, most fish are not as dependent on seeing and their vision as much as um, sound and smell. So for this reason, a lot of fish will disguise their eyes to try and bamboozle a predator as to which end to eat first. It, it's a, a protective, um, mechanism. So a good eye in a lure um, is an eye that should have flash. Now flash is the reflection. So when it moves around um, it's literally a glare that will attract um, attention. So Bezo's eyes are extremely important. We put a lot of work into it and they are unique. They're specially designed and we try and incorporate our eyes in all of our lures and our jig heads. Um, if you're actually attaching a lure to a jig head, we suggest you actually remove the eyes. Definitely cut the lure off to fit the head. And that applies to anything. You, you really don't want two sets of eyes because, again, that's just very unnatural. The next most impart, important part of this presentation is swimming. Now, if, if a lure can't swim, it's a compromise. And I can assure you we've tested probably 90% of the popular lures on the market and of that 90%, probably 80% don't swim. Um, the important things is a lure must have a good, strong swimming action all the time, not just as you um, retrieve the lure, because most lures, when you pull them towards you or troll, will swim. But it's on the drop that it's really critical. Um, most lures don't swim on the drop. They'll spiral, do all sorts of things. Very, very unnatural. Um, a good lure should also have a side-to-side -side flick apart from the tail swimming. Now what this does, it's like a wobble going through the water, this actually increases flash and that's the reason we've got different colours on their back and on the belly of the lure. Um, and this actually again in increases the flash in the lure with the eyes um, and even at slow speed it should have that little wobble. All of this is another trigger to a predator. The next most important thing and probably the most confusing thing to most people is colour. Why are all of these lures such crazy colours and nothing like a fish? 
Well, firstly, what we've got to understand is why the water is certain colours. And water is actually a reflection of the material suspended in it. So when you've got really dirty water, um, it's brown because there's mud suspended in it, and mud's brown as we know. It's also, if you look at the colour spectrum of a rainbow, um, this is why Lewis, the first colour to disappear in depth is actually red. And as you go down to the purple, each colour disappears in that order. So when you've got, if you, if you look at the top of this graph, you'll see in between the, the red and the yellow is that brownie colour. Well, that's dirt. And it's, it's the first colour that's being reflected. It's the last one. None of the other colours are actually getting through the suspended material, so the water appears brown. Um, purple's the last colour to disappear, and that's why when you go right out in the ocean, the water looks purple. And that's because all the other colours have disappeared. The last colour to be reflected is purple. Here's a good example. Um, this is in the Northern Territory of a flooded uh, creek after the um, big wet. And you'll see there's obviously a lot of mud and debris and that's why it's brown. It just comes back again to this same spectrum. You can see the brown there in between the red and the yellow. Um, that's the particles suspended and the light's reflecting off it. Now the importance of this is that means that the brownie colour is actually the most visible. So that's why this lure, for example, is always a very, very good barramundi lure. It's a gold lure, we call it um, a bleeding mullet. And a lot of hard body lures, most barramundi fishermen use this because it, it's the closest lure to actually matching the water. And a good guy to always start is match the lure colour to the water on the day. Here's this ocean blue I was talking about where it's purple. So in that case, you want to use a blue lure. Now for years there was a Rapala lure that was blue and everybody knew, God, this lure works really well offshore. And that's because it's the most visible colour deep. Um, so, you know, this is what you've got to consider. Just start as a starting point and try and match the lure colour to the water. Um, blue green water, for example, again, you want to come back and look down this chart and you see down the bottom blue and green. So either of these um, lures will work, but you've got to work out how do you select the best colour for that water. And the best colour in that water is a bluey green type lure. Um, and the same thing goes for that muddy water. Any colour brown or above will work well in that water. So that's why here a red lure or a pink lure is always very good in dirty water. Now what I'd like to know is how many of you would actually buy this lure. It's a ghastly looking thing and um, I can, one thing I can tell you is I can guarantee you that this lure will catch fish but as you can see here our biggest problem is um, people have to buy the lure and I'm sure most of you have said God no I wouldn't buy that. Um, well I can tell you this, this lure would be a sensational one but no one would buy it except me and you know a couple of other fishermen that sort of understand it. And you've got to say, well, why? Well, it gets down to contrast. A, a good lure has to have contrast. What, what we need to understand is fish are absolute experts at camouflage. Now here you can see a couple of um, sole or flounder sitting on the bottom, almost impossible to see. So how does a predator know? It's, it's camouflage, and that's what we forget. Most, most um, lures, if it's a natural colour, tend to blend in. So what we want to do is make it stand out. And it's, it's like sending all these triggers to predators saying, here I am, come and get me, not here I am hiding on the bottom. Um, a good lure must have contrast. Now, if you look at the water behind this chap, he, he didn't catch it in that water, but that day, you can see it's overcast. I can assure you the water would have been a blue-green. This lure's got blue-green. It's got a little bit of purple on the head. Um, now that signifies um, danger, it's also where the gills flare out, you know, fish when they panic throw their gills out and you can see the red, um, so we like to use that on some of those lures. That's why he's caught that kingfish on that lure on that particular day. He's done the right thing and matched the lure to the lure colour and the lure has contrast, so when it flashes through the water you can actually see it. The blue green in the lure red around the head for distress. It's the same reason we use the red in the eyes. The holographic eyes with flash. 
contrasting colour on the belly. And the reason for that is we usually use a darker colour underneath in general because fish are dark on top because if a predator is above them looking down, they're camouflaged about against the bottom of the water. If they're looking up, most fish have white bellies because the sky is light, so that should be a darker colour, again, to give you contrast. Um, now, all of our rig lures, all of the mullet, um, have internal rattles. Unfortunately, we can't put them in the smelt galaxy because of the sheer size. Again, this is uh, an attractant. What most people don't realise is fish have um, amazing hearing. They, they do have ears up under their head, under the flesh, um, but their main hearing is actually along the lateral line, which is that line, kingfish are the best example, where it's dark, the dark band that goes around them. It, it is a feeling, but to them, that's how they hear. Now, if a dog can hear 50 times better than a human, research has shown that um, a fish can hear 50 times better than a dog. For this reason also, this is why it's important to be quiet in a boat and not belt around because I can assure you those fish will hear it the same as leaving your motor running unless you're in exceptionally deep water this is enough to scare the fish so quietness the old stealth approach um, definitely works except the rattle in the lure attracts the fish and we've been very careful to have a particular sound it's quite a, a deep um, quiet rattle it doesn't need to be loud but it's another trigger. It's one of those things that just attracts the fish, hears a noise, they come and have a look, they see all the flash. The, the other big thing that I've always found with most fishermen is always have a look at the conditions. So many people have a favorite lure and they think they caught them yesterday, go out and use that lure today. Just because you did catch a fish on a certain lure yesterday doesn't mean you'll catch it today. Don't have a favorite color, mix and match, match your lure to the water color and the conditions on the day. The next most important thing is profile, and this is one of the areas that we particularly develop the cruncher lure, for example, for snapper. Um, many other um, fish eat mullet. That's why we did a, a, an actual mullet. Mullet is prolific all around the world um, as a, a bait fish. So, you know, the whole thing is try and match the hatch to watch to what the actual fish are eating or normally eat. Um, so match the hatch. Mullet or a shad shape represents the most abundant fish shape in New Zealand. So it's just as long as it's a fish, um, and that's why we made a mullet lure. Now the other important thing is scent, and there's a lot of scepticism about scent. Does it work? Doesn't it work? And why some of these weird colours? I can't tell you why garlic works, for example, but it's been well known for a long time that two of the scents that always did work were aniseed and garlic. Um, our mullet lures, for example, we use um, pure garlic scent. They're not um, fabricated, you know, chemically made products. We use 100% natural products. Um, what scent does is it actually makes the fish hang on longer. It doesn't so much trigger it to attack, although if you put a lot of scent in, it can leave a trail in the water that will attract them. But it's more that first grab that they just hang on to that extra few seconds that lets you sink the hook in. Um, and it does result in fish like this. This is a 55 pound barramundi, you know, massive saltwater barramundi. Um, scent works, and there's no doubt about that. What we did in researching snapper, particularly in New Zealand, is most snapper eat squid. Um, so what we've actually done is scented our cruncher lures with pure squid oil um, and and it works we because the lures are biodegradable it actually gets absorbed into the lures and um, shortly we've got them coming out with even more scent in um, but this is what really works now i think it's time to go fishing and have a look at some of the results um, after this fishing slideshow what i'd like you to do is have a look at the uh, dvd that we've also provided showing a, a cobia being caught on a bozos and also a snapper. Both of these you'll see they're uncut, it's from the bottom to the top. Some of these photos um, that are following you'll see also I, I do not reset hooks in fish's mouths. Some fish won't have a, a hook in it. Um, I'm just not into you know doing something just for the camera. Um, you can believe me or not believe me but I can assure you all of these fish were caught on bozos. This is a queenie. This is just to show you some of the um, versification that we've done. We actually trolled 
um, one of our six inch mullet most people troll hard body lures bang straight away we caught a couple of queenies had an absolute ball on those um, they just about spill you all the time because we're using light barrel rods but again the lure swims um, any fish they, they'll attack not a problem in the world and the same thing with um, black dew we mucked around and put extra weight now, this applies all over the world with any fish particularly in New Zealand with your harpooker and whatever um, work out how to get the lure down there how much weight do you need there's nothing even wrong with running um, a ledger rig with a lure with a little bit of weight on it if you've got some current um, and generally the, the less action the better just twitch the rod tip shake it particularly on a ledger rig you can just you know give it a little shake on the bottom um, that's the first snapper we ever caught before we developed the cruncher on one of our grubs um, that's this is in New Zealand when we came over and this is the time that we decided look we need to do a different profile yes we did well with them and the grubs in certain applications do work really well they work well on the uh, weed beds they're a very slow swimming lure so when the fish aren't particularly active and, and shut down this can be a good way um, to fish for snapper um, just to give you some of the th idea of some of the fish that we have caught um, this is about a 20 pound coral trout that was caught on a bozo's 5 inch unrigged mullet um, there's another shot of it you can see the lure actually in the mouth the interesting thing is look at the teeth on this thing the lure is still in good condition bozos are without doubt the toughest lure on the market we've made them all a 50 hardness where most other lures are about a 30 hardness I've done that because I'm a fisherman I want the lures to last whether that's good for business or bad for business I don't know but but I've got a good conscience and I really believe most people lose a lure or change colour because of the conditions again have a look at the lure have a look at the water behind it blue water blue lure that's the result this is um, the first decent snapper we caught on the cruncher over in New Zealand um, this one was around 18 pounds and was caught up in the uh, Wittianga Coromandel area um, fairly shallow water what you'll find they they nail them at full speed um, just pick them up and they run you want very little action what we usually do is just actually tap the rod butt point the rod to the water keep in touch with the bottom this was rigged with a 5 8 ounce jig head and honestly I find in most conditions even down about 45 meters of water that's sufficient um, you know sometimes you might have to back the boat up slightly to to let the lure sink um, but you're best to fish as light as you can and virtually no action just tap it so there's a little shutter going down the line the reason you point the rod to the water is you've got plenty of room to strike don't strike once strike twice make sure you sink the hook in the same thing we had a lot of success with uh, kingies this is a kingy on one of our thumper grubs we've also as you know now got the uh, kingy cruncher lure which is a bigger version of the same lure for snapper deadly our first time out with the prototypes on the cruncher lures we caught 43 kingfish in one session all between 10 and 15 kilos here's another couple of uh, good fish on thumper grubs gem fish on the right uh, another coral trout caught up in Vanuatu on the left now we've had massive success these lures here's another thumper grub that caught 120 kilo blue marlin since then they've also caught a 74 kilo blue marlin um, mahi mahi these lures are not designed for this at all they're a bottom bashing lure that actual lure has got an 8 ounce jig head and you'll see they've still landed a marlin and it's just they found by accident they, they lifted the marlin up better than a lot of the marlin lures so we're now developing these tails and we'll do them in all different colours um, with a marlin type acrylic jig head we've experimented with a lot and we're getting a really good swim action but it's just incredible good design just does everything that's a kingy um, on a thumper grub it's a kingy on a cruncher now this is one of the prototypes um, when we were first mucking around with them this is one of the ones where we caught the 43 in the one session it's probably the most fun day and tiring days fishing I've ever had in my life absolutely brilliant um, that's a snapper on a um, the kernel in a cruncher um, pretty ugly but he's an Australian one so we know you have them prettier over there um, again just to give you a bit of interest that's a barramundi 92 centimeters caught on a little bozo's four inch um, I just cast that up current let it come down with the current and just twitched it and bang they just hit we pulled eight barra off one snag right in that spot 
Um, that's another barra, that's an impoundment barra Monday, and that one I used for actually jigging. It was in a deep hole, and because bozos swim at such a slow speed, you can just twitch the rod tip and really annoy them. Um, one thing I'll add here too, it's, it's a really good idea to use coloured braid where it changes colour every five metres because you can work out exactly, you can look at your sound and say, okay, the fish is sitting at 30 metres. You can let out 30 metres of line exactly, sit it in front of their nose and just annoy them. And I'll tell you, they'll nail them. And this is what happened. This was over a metre, straight off, bang. Um, just a few other different sorts of fish we've caught. Tea leaf trevally. Um, you know, there's no end to it. This is a New Zealand harpooka. Um, this was caught on a bozo's thumper grub and um, it was caught on a ledger rig. So we've had a lot of success with harpooka. Just to give you another idea, we've again a good swimming lure catches fish anywhere. This is an Australian cod, this one's 70 pounds. Um, since then, these guys have caught over 100 cod over a metre since last June. And they also caught one at 137 pounds, the largest cod ever caught in Australia on a rod and reel. And all of those were caught on a Bassman spinner bait with a bozo's tail. Before they used bozos, they were using another brand of soft plastic and had no success. Everybody thought all the big cod had gone. But because of the slow swim action and the slow speed and keeping the lure in the zone, bozos has had massive success. Now how's that? That's another harpooka on a cruncher. Now again, crunches, as you know, we've said are designed for kingfish. Don't limit it to, you know, one style of fishing. Whack them on, definitely on your ledger rigs. Um, get them down to the bottom and just twitch it, shake it. Uh, you haven't got to do a lot. That, that lure um, will do it for you. And there you can see, lovely harpooka, um, you know, because this chap's had a go. Um, that's a dolphin fish that was caught trolling. You can see these guys have rigged up a bit of a marlin skirt around it just as an extra attractant. And this gets back to that flash I was talking about earlier. Um, you know, they, they experiment, muck around, have a go. But the important thing underlying everything is you need a good strong lure and a lure that's swimming. If it, if it doesn't swim and look natural, um, people can say, oh yeah, it looks like a dying bait fish, but I can assure you it doesn't because a, a dying bait fish, they usually give a shudder and a shiver before they die, and that's why we use that technique of hitting the rod butt on the snapper, because um, it makes the, the, the lure look like a, a, a fish that's about to die. Most fish don't really want to eat a fish that's already dead. So something spiraling at the bottom doesn't really look particularly appetising, and it'll just detract from that trigger that might make the predator attack. That's another nice snapper. I'm not sure, I think that one was about a 10 pounder, maybe 15 pounder. Um, it's a pretty solid fish, even though it's at that action, but they were just ecstatic. Um, and that's a young girl who caught another lovely snapper. So it's, it's not, you know, you don't necessarily need massive angler skill with bozos. As, as we said earlier, just get it down there, twitch the rod tip, keep in the zone. Don't do too much. The snapper, a lot of time, the less you do, the better. Um, little John Dory on a thumper grub. They obviously like the, the big meals. <laughs> they, they always seem to take um, huge baits, but there's no end to what you know a good lure will catch. Just a bit of interest, that's a black bass up in New Guinea, very sought after fish. That's only a little one, but again, that's one of our um, crunches. So they're certainly not limited to just snapper. Um, that's a scorpion fish. You want to keep away from its tentacles, but again, you know, good lure catches anything. There's no end to it. Um, our little Smilk Galaxia caught some fantastic trout. This is a 12 pounder caught by Scott Hampton in New Zealand. Um, since then we've caught, uh, had fishermen catch 17 pound rainbow trout down in Tasmania. Very, very successful lure. And um, spinning for um, trout is, is a really up and coming side of the market. Um, explore it, that's why we've got all the little lures. They also catch um, your little, I think you call them tar wine. Um, we use it for brim and whatever, so there's no end to everything, just have a go. That's another lovely snapper caught on a bozo's, the Colonel. Um, I guess you can see by the background that's the Gold Coast. I don't know why, but this one's actually reasonably good looking for some of our fish. Um, that's another New Zealand snapper. That was caught on our first time when we, we really only had those grubs, but again, it just shows 
you know, they will catch fish um, in certain conditions. Um, dew fish, it doesn't matter what, anything. That colour you can see there, even though it's a fairly natural colour, it still works exceptionally well because there is contrast with that mackerel pattern on the back and also obviously the pink jig heads. Definitely the, the bright pinks and the, the luminous greens, they're both luminous, work much better than a white because of that attractant. So don't be stuck with thinking, oh, no fish has a black head or, or you know, so I must use a white jig head. Um, we catch many, many more fish on the pink and especially the green. So, you know, try them all, experiment. That's one haul of uh, snapper. Again, up in that Whittianga Coromandel area. Um, not a bad morning's fishing. Um, that's that same snapper I think I showed you before, just different angle. Um, now this was um, a dog tooth tuna on a thumper grub. Now what happened, this was caught 200 miles out to sea. Um, they generally for these were using metal jigs, but these two girls couldn't jig a metal jig. The owner of this boat, the charter operator, wanted to try and catch a um, dog tooth tuna on a soft plastic. So I gave him some of these thumper grubs. The very first drop, these two girls used thumper grubs because they couldn't jig the metal jigs. They had a double hook up and this is one of the two. They obviously couldn't lift both. Um, you'll see the lure isn't in its mouth, but if you want verification, ring Damon Olsen from Nomad Sport Fishing and he'll tell you all about it. Um, and if you want an exciting fishing trip, give him a call. Um, but yeah, since then they've caught 100 kilo dog tooth tuna, so it's astounding. Um, once again, here's a, um, uh, well that's an early slide, but this I've just put in here again, just showing you a kingfish, not necessarily limited to just kingy crunches. Here's one on a six inch Bozo's mullet. And that's um, mixed barra money. He was so happy. Now, this guy's a professional guide. You look how happy he is because he just, um, he always wanted that dream fish and there he is and the Bozo's did it for him. Another cod. Huge fish. Uh, you'll all know what this is. Little New Zealand fish. I keep forgetting what it is. Blue eyed cod, blue cod, blue something or other. Um, but look, this little bloke has just devoured this um, kernel in a, in a cruncher. So this just surprises me. It's, you can catch anything. Another kingy. Um, I actually caught that one when I was really uh, targeting snapper. So <laughs> you never know. He was only in shallow water and bang. So um, And that was the smaller one. So again, the six inch will catch kingfish as well. Um, New Zealand snapper, that's on a pure blonde. So all colours work. We're only doing three colours in the crunches. We've got four in the kingy cruncher. But we've caught many snapper on every colour. The other thing to point out, all of these fish have only been caught in the last six months on the, this slide. So it's, um, we've had massive results and certainly bigger fish than any of our competition. Um, that's Don, I think that's one of your little salmon, I think. Um, we call them a salmon, I'm not sure what you call them in New Zealand, but yeah, again, you know, they'll catch anything. It's a, a cruncher in the kernel. And another good looking John Dory. I'm not sure that lure, I originally thought it was in a boomer colour, which is the dark brown, but it could also be in glar. Um, but again, just looking at the sky being overcast, that's why that lures work well. It's stood out, it's a murky, darker colour. Um, and you, you know from before, the red is the first colour to go off. So it, it probably is a red, it's just a bit hard to tell. But either colour would have worked on that day, the red or the brown, because they're colours that would have been seen, um, because the water certainly would have been that really, really bright blue colour. Um, there's another one and you see again that lure's got a bit of blue and white contrast but that's one of the blue and white crunches. Um, another John Dory so you know you can sort of um, catch anything. Um, another good snapper the Colonel. Um, just a popular colour but honestly don't just stick with that. Vary it. Um, it, the reason that colour works well is, is the red through to the green covers a broad spectrum in that rainbow. You'll you remember that red was right at the very top and green was a fair way down before the blue. But that day you could have used the blue and white would have worked just as well and white always seems to work well in any water. 
So there we have it. Um, that's just a bit of a run through on bozos and what's in it and all the different things that are important. The hooks are extremely important. We use 72% high carbon steel hooks um, that are all chemically sharpened. The, the biggest thing to my way of thinking is the eyes, the colour range and the design, the swim action, the contrast and the internal rattle. So the difference is our lures have everything in them um, and all those attractants to trigger a predator to attack. Um, that's the cruncher range of lures, um, which also come with their own designed worm hooks if you want to rig them like that. We often rig them just with um, sinkers or, or a, a um, jig head, but there's nothing to stop you just using a worm hook straight off a uh, ledger rig or even just a normal hook on a ledger rig. It, it really won't matter. But we've done that just for people who want to flick um, weightless lures as well, because that's a pretty um, good way to fish, particularly in snaggy snaggy areas. So that's all from Bozos. We really hope you enjoy this, enjoyed this presentation. Um, just leaving you there with another one of our handsome snapper from the Gold Coast. And um, that, that's all from us here.